In the last video, I mentioned that I wanted to start doing little monthly recap videos for my antique booth just to kind of share what sold, how much it sold for, if I made a profit that month, just all of the little things about running an antique booth. I think it could be super helpful to see what I'm picking up, what's selling for me. I know you guys see a lot of the things I grab in thrift hauls and in my reels, so I think it would be interesting for you guys to be able to see what specifically is selling for me. I'm backtracking a little bit to show you, to tell you guys about the numbers from January 15th to February 15th, because this current cycle is not over yet. I wanted to share the previous one. Okay, before I go into this, <laughs> I am not a tax professional. Please speak to a professional if you have questions regarding taxes. Uh, this is just personally what I do in my personal opinion. I do my taxes on a cash basis versus an accrual basis. So I track what my income and expenses are for the month as a whole. I don't track my cost of goods individually. Every time I thrift, I just kind of like record I spent this much for my business at Goodwill and then like at the end of the month I'll compare it to my income and that's how I kind of do my taxes. It's very confusing. Please speak to a professional. So I can't give you the individual cost of goods on every one of these items unless it was recent or unless I remember it off the top of my head, but I will tell you the amount I receive after they take their fees out. The antique booth I'm at is at Antiques and Uniques in Melbourne, Florida. I'll have the address to it down below. Uh, rent for my booth is $260 per month, so the 15th to the 15th, and then they take a 10% commission on all sales I make. So I'll tell you all of the total num numbers at the end of the video after I share what sold. So the first thing that sold between <laughs> January 15th and February 15th was a green floral candlestick holder. It was actually Mikasa. If I can find pictures for these items, I'll pop them on the screen, but a lot of these I don't have photos of, so... I'm just gonna have to try to get real descriptive, but sold this Mikasa green candlestick holder. Candlestick holders do generally pretty well for me in my booth. I always stick a candle in them as well. And like, you can either take the candle with it if you would like, but I think that sticking a candle in it does help sell them. This sold for $12.50 and the store took $1.25. So I made, I got $11.25 for this. Then I sold a green bud vase. It looks similar to those just white milk glass vases, but it was just like a green clear glass. This sold for $12 and after fees, I received $10.80. I see a lot of those vases. I think I typically spend between like one to four dollars on those at the thrift store so that's a pretty good little flip i sold a fenton pink mini vase i think this person yeah these actually sold together someone bought the green bud vase and then the fenton pink vase they were both just little tiny <laughs> flower vases the fenton one sold for 25 dollars, making my take home 22 dollars and 50 cents i also sold a pyrex butterfly gold gravy dish I love finding Pyrex. Uh, Butterfly Gold is one of my favorite patterns. I've actually sold a set of dishes in my booth before for like $125. So I do like to pick it up when I see it for the right price. This gravy bow and saucer sold for $28 making my earnings $25.20. The next thing that sold was also Pyrex. Actually, the next two things that sold were also Pyrex. I sold a like a medium-sized Pyrex blue glass mixing bowl. If you can hear that noise, that is Archie playing with the cords of the blinds i'm so sorry <laughs> uh this bowl sold for 25 dollars making my earnings 22 dollars and 50 cents and then i actually sold another one of those it was a slightly different blue color and it was a little bit smaller so this one sold for 18 dollars making my earnings 16 dollars and 20 cents those also actually sold to the same person i get an invoice number on the sheet so then i can see like when it was the same ticket so the same person bought both items the next thing i sold was a brass candle snuffer i think this this is like the only time i found one of these at the thrift store so like the only one i've ever had available in my booth and it sold for 12 dollars, making my earnings 10 dollars and 80 cents i then sold a little wedgwood trinket box it was like the blue jasper wear color this one sold for 25 dollars, making my earnings 22 dollars and 50 cents i sold a starbucks mug i didn't write anything descriptive other than starbucks mug on this so i'm really not sure which one it is but it sold for six dollars making my earnings five dollars and 40 cents if it was six dollars i think it was probably one of the more basic designs next up is a vintage savannah georgia mug i think i also have a picture of this one this one was really cute i almost kept it i had it sitting in the booth for a little bit but then I, it's one of the ones i moved up to the front table and once i moved it up to the front table it sold definitely recommend rotating your items in the booth this sold for eight dollars and fifty cents which made my earnings seven dollars and sixty five cents 
I sold another Wedgwood blue Jasperware thing. It was a little tiny dish. It sold for $10 making my earnings $9. I sold a set of vintage 80s seashell mugs. I loved this set so much. I remember picking this up. I thought they were so cute. They were just handmade. They had like someone's signature on the bottom and then it said 80, maybe 86 on it. Uh, these sold for $18, making my earnings $16.20 on the two mugs. I think I do remember my cost of goods on this one. It was either $1 to $3 per mug because I remember them not having a Goodwill tag and I went up to the cashier and she might have charged me like 150 a piece uh so that was a pretty good flip and then i sold a set of two vintage pale yellow glass candlestick holders these ones were cool they like slightly had a glow under black light which usually means it's made with partially like uranium glass um i'm not an expert on that but if you want to like look that up and look more into it sometimes old green or yellow glass will glow under a black light meaning it was made with uranium i gave a black light on my keychain so when i'm at thrift stores i can like see if the green or yellow glass glows i think i got them on amazon there's like a pack of like five for a few dollars definitely look more into that if you are an antique booth owner or into vintage glassware or if you're an expert on the subject please let me know in the comments i'd love to learn more about it but i sold a set of two of these candlesticks i actually had them priced pretty high but then ended up dropping the price down to 35 dollars and they sold at 35 dollars uh, I did get a call from the antique mall that the candlesticks broke. One of them broke while they were checking out. This happens sometimes, stuff breaks, accidents happen, people drop things. Uh, the antique booth is typically does not reimburse you for that, but in this particular instance, the cashier actually paid for the candlestick she broke, which was super nice. So I was able to get my full earnings on that okay so they sold for $35 making my earning $31.50 the next thing I sold was another set of candle holders these are my best sellers I'm telling you uh, these were amber glass a set of amber glass ones they sold for $40 making my earnings $36 this was a really good sale I also sold another candlestick holder this one was actually just like a large pink flash glass one I believe it was a flash glass this one sold for $18 making my earnings $16.20 it actually Looks like the same person bought all of these candlesticks which is super cool so if you're watching this video i doubt you are but if you are thank you so much for supporting my small business it really truly does mean a lot to me um if any of you have ever purchased or just even supporting me by watching these youtube videos i i super appreciate it uh, moving on i sold two more starbucks mugs uh one was actually a really cool starbucks mug i found pretty recently it was from their first ever starbucks store it was a different logo than i usually see this one sold for 18 dollars making my earnings 16 dollars and 20 cents the next starbucks mug that sold was a starbucks missouri mug uh this sold for 15 dollars making my earnings 13 dollars and 50 cents i think that the cost of goods on all of the state mugs i found recently were like seven dollars so it was pretty pricey but still almost a double up the price of my starbucks mugs do vary in my booth based on i do look up comps for a lot of things so if it's a more rare starbucks mug i'll price it up a little bit if it's a more basic one you see a lot i won't price it up as high as long as i'm still like making some money on it i'll usually try to price things like still give you a good deal in my booth but still be able to you know make a profit the next four items that sold sold to the same person they were a set they were four fiesta wear mugs i love picking up fiesta wear i sold a yellow one a navy one a maroon one and then another navy one they bought two navies each of these mugs sold at eight dollars a piece so for each mug i made i got seven dollars and twenty cents i don't pick up all fiesta wear prices vary depending on how old it is the color it is because they are still fiesta wear is still in production so i i usually only pick newer ones up if it's just like the circle handle mugs those are my favorite to pick up i just really like the way they look and i have a little holder in my booth that fits them pretty well always check comps on fiesta wear don't just pick it up because it is fiesta wear how many times can i say fiesta wear in one sentence but if you want some more information on it i do have a graphic over on my instagram that i can link in the description that kind of shows like the more rare colors and what to keep an eye out for and as always you can check comps on ebay type in fiesta wear sort by highest price see what's selling for a super high price and that's a way that you can learn which ones to pick up and which ones to leave behind the next thing that sold was a vintage westmoreland milk glass trinket dish this was just like a white milk glass little tray with a silver handle sticking out of it this i've had since i opened my booth so that was sitting for a while this sold for 24 dollars, making my earnings 21 dollars and 60 cents i sold another fiesta wear item this was actually a teacup and saucer it was a yellow green chartreuse color 
Uh, this sold for $8, making my earnings $7.20. The retail price of this one I had on it was $10. Occasionally, the antique mall every few months will do a store-wide sale, and I have it set that my particular booth was on a 20% off sale. So the next few items were included in this 20% off sale. I do have some t-shirts in my booth. I make them myself with my Cricut, my heat press. A lot of the t-shirts are on thrifted clothing to give them a second life, promote sustainability, all of that kind of stuff. Um, I have a little note about it on the tag attached to all of the t-shirts, but I did sell one of my iced coffee and antique malls t-shirt designs. <laughs> this sold on the 20% off sale for $16, making my earnings $14.40. And then also during the sale, I sold this vintage <laughs> window mirror shelf. Uh, I remember seeing this at Goodwill and I had no idea what it was, but I thought it was a cute concept that it looked like a window and you could hang it on the wall. So I ended up grabbing that and it sold for $24 in my sale and it made my earnings $21.60. Then I sold another fiesta wear mug uh, this was another navy one it sold on sale for six dollars and forty cents making my earnings five dollars and seventy six cents then i sold two brass candlestick holders these were not in a set they were just kind of individually priced uh, one of them sold for eight dollars after the sale making my earnings seven dollars and twenty cents and the other sold for six dollars and forty cents making my earnings $5.76. Candle holders, I kind of price between eight to $15 or higher if they're bigger, but it's all depending on the condition and the brand. Uh, Baldwin candlesticks, I will price a little bit higher, uh, but basic, no brand, vintage brass candlesticks will be priced a little bit lower. And if they are in a set, I usually will put them together as a set, like price them together. Uh, but sometimes I just do individual so you can mix and match. I then sold a small metal seashell dish. I actually have quite a few of these in my booth. Uh, it sold for $6.40 on sale and I made $5.76. Next up is a pair of salt and pepper shakers. These were actually uh, the Pyrex Spring Blossom print. These were super cute. I was so excited to add them to the booth. I think I actually showed them in a haul over here on YouTube. This is after the sale has ended at this point. So these sold for $15, making my earnings $13.50. I do remember picking these up in a bag. They had a, it was the thrift store put them in a bag with a bunch of other things. And I think the total for the bag was like $5. I already made money on that bag just selling one item. So that was a pretty good deal the next item i got excited because the way this shows up in my i can actually show you the way this shows up is it looked like i sold a bunch of fiesta wear plates like it continues on this side as well and i got super excited because i just added those and i thought i sold like all of them uh but it turns out somebody bought 10 of them and then returned all 10 of them so that was kind of disappointing to see opening it and then seeing that but that's okay that's just like how business works sometimes i'll get a call from the store when things like that happen or when someone wants a better price on something it is built into the contract that if someone is asking a lot about price i am a little like you can negotiate a little bit so typically if someone comes to the register is trying to get something for a cheaper price they notice a flaw they have like a percentage that i signed off on that they can go down on but sometimes i'll get a call from the store that's like this person is willing to pay this much or this person wants to know if you can give them a better deal um i think that's something that happened with the fiesta wear plates i think that they thought they were still in the 20 percent off sale or something and i think there was some confusion about the percentage off and they didn't want them for my little set percentage off so they ended up returning all of them but that's okay <laughs> they'll sell to someone else uh but i did sell two uh fiesta wear bowls uh, those sold I have those marked at I have the bowls marked at five dollars a piece um, It looks like this person did Haggle the price a little bit. So it looks like the sold price is four dollars and fifty cents on those making my earnings four dollars and five cents It can be a little frustrating when people are haggling over price since you're a small business But you have to remember that a lot of these people don't realize that it's a bunch of small businesses Like they just think they're going to an antique mall the store owns it like it's just so, so you can't I'm trying really hard not to take these things personally, uh, but it can be a little sad when you see something like that. But if you think about it, you're still making a sale. You're still making money on the items and someone's walking away happy with the price they paid. So that's my little spiel about that. But I also sold two Fiesta Wear mugs. These sold for full price of $8 a piece. So I made $7.20 on each one. I also sold a, this vintage strawberry print graph. I know some of you who watch all of my videos definitely recognize this one i've talked about it a lot i loved this one it actually sold within a few days of me putting it out 
in the booth. It sold for $35, making my earnings $31.50. And then the last two things that sold in this billing cycle were the set of two strawberry glasses. They didn't match the craft exactly, but I thought they were cute together. And this person actually purchased those with the craft. So those sold for $15, making my earnings $13.50 on those. I, overall, it was a really great month for me between January 15th and February 15th. There were a few months in the beginning where I didn't make rent completely or I just made like a few dollars over rent. So it's been pretty exciting to see an increase in how my booth can grow. And I'm sure I'm still gonna have months here and there that I don't make a lot or I don't make, we'll see if I get to that rent number. Uh, but the number one thing I've noticed is the more I add the more I sell which makes sense because with reselling That's how that's how you make sales you list consistently you sell consistently So me adding a bunch of the booth I'm selling more so it's definitely also a Figuring out what's selling and that takes experience of like being there and looking at your specific sales from each month So I can notice what people are looking for and what I should pick up more of and put more of in my booth So I mentioned before that rent is $260.93 So that was taken out of the total I made from this month um, after their 10% commission So then I was left with $231.55 in take-home pay So that is what was deposited into my bank account for between January 15th and February 15th antique booths aren't a super lucrative business i feel like it's not something you're going to start and make a ton of money on a ton of ton of sales it's something that's generally pretty passive i try to go once a week but sometimes that ends up being once every two weeks and in the beginning it was a lot more as i'm getting things added but once you have like a fully stocked booth you really don't need to go as often but you i do recommend you still go to move things around and like a lot of stuff that I move will end up selling. So it's either someone new coming through or someone who didn't see it before because I had it on a back shelf. If it's something that you are passionate about, you're a reseller, you love picking up vintage home decor or whatever you wanna sell in your booth, I do recommend it. Uh, it can be frustrating and it can take a few months to figure it out. Uh, but make sure you give it your if you're gonna do it make sure you give it a fair shot don't just I, I thought I thought about giving up after a few months because I wasn't making as much as I wanted to or barely making that rent mark but um, as of right now I'm really glad I stuck with it and I'm interested to see how it goes in the future so if you have any questions about my antique booth about owning one about how to get started any questions at all you can leave them in the comments below and I will try and answer you either in the comments or in my next little antique booth recap video but yeah if you would like to see a video of my booth of me restocking it of what it looks like how it's laid out you can click this one right here and i will see you in the next one